It's remembering the monumental and mundane, the hugs and humor. It's hard questions. I don't know what my day looks like anymore. And honest answers. It's normal to struggle with that right now. Thank you so much for coming by. It's, it's helping family and friends say farewell. Welcome. I'm Carolyn Fleetstra. I'm Vice President of Faith Hospice. And thank you so much for being here uh, today to support us and to um, learn about the important ministry of Faith Hospice and our planned uh, Faith Hospice um, su Grief Support Center. Special thanks to our sponsors today, all of whom are listed on the screen here. And an important reason that um, every dollar raised today goes directly to the Faith Hospice Grief Support Center is in thanks to, uh, thanks to the generosity of Ben Wickstrom and Earhart Construction and we are really appreciative of that. We also thank all of our table hosts and their friends um, because you have already raised uh, over $33,000 towards our event today. Um, our goal for today is $55,000 and everyone will be able to continue to donate um, through either our Facebook page or on our website <clears throat> through the end of September. At Faith Hospice, we feel like family and we hope that um, after today's event, you feel like Faith Hospice is part of your family too. Um, and we hope that you share with others what you've learned today because so many families don't realize all of the support that's available uh, through Faith Hospice and the special people who work for Faith Hospice. Life uh, has been really unusual the last number of months and I, I don't need to tell you that, but for some, uh, that means they've lost a loved one. For some, uh, their lives changed in a moment. And unfortunately, many are no longer a stranger to grief. And so uh, today we want to talk about what Faith Hospice has planned um, to develop a grief support center and also what our team is doing to walk alongside those who are grieving. We also want to talk about how important um, grief support is to that journey and how uh, the new grief support center will really do a better job of serving the community. So with me today is Faith Hospice Bereavement Manager Janet Jamin and Faith Hospice Registered Nurse uh, Victoria Winger. And uh, I just want to acknowledge that this is out of our comfort zone for all three of us. <laughs> and um, so we do have notes if you see us referring to those, but it's really because we want to have a great discussion um, for all of you. So this is really a privilege for me to have this time. And I am just so proud of the work that's done by Faith Hospice and by uh, the amazing staff that work with Faith Hospice. So let's start with Janet. Can you share a brief insight into um, how bereavement plays such an important part in the grieving process? Absolutely. Unfortunately, no one can escape grief. And when we lose someone, whether it's a friend or a parent or a sibling, spouse, it's really one of the most devastating experiences we will have in life. And to start the process of healing, one really has to acknowledge that pain. Trying to avoid feelings of sadness and loss only prolongs the grieving process. And of late with the COVID-19 crisis, people have been struggling with additional losses, such as not being able to visit family and friends, while others are experiencing job loss, wondering if they're going to have a job to go back to. Then we have the loss of touch, the loss of eating together, or gathering for Sunday worship. For others, it's been the unthinkable. It's been the physical loss of someone to COVID-19. These things are devastating to the folks that we are seeing. Victoria, can you talk about how the COVID pandemic has affected your work and what is it like to go into a house where you know there's COVID? Um, I know at first it was a little bit fearful 
for us to go into these places where COVID was happening. Um, for me personally, I was more afraid of picking it up and spreading it to family and friends and to the, the community that we serve. Um, but as things progressed and it became more of the new normal, um, we, we started to see our patients becoming fearful of the personal protective equipment that we would be wearing. And a lot of the times they didn't understand why we were coming to them with a gown and a face shield and a mask on. Um, and it can sometimes trigger some unexpected uh, behaviors. Uh, I had a patient at a nursing home who uh, I had woken her up from a nap and she didn't know, who, she didn't recognize me because of my, my equipment that I had on. And she wasn't happy with me uh, waking her up and not knowing who I was. And she kind of just shooed me out of, out of her room. And she, um, she walked down the hall and she went to a nurse that she recognized. And she only spoke Dutch, so I don't know what she was saying, but I was very, very clear she was not happy. And she was pointing at me and she was looking at the nurse and she was just very, very displeased with me. And so she, that was the end of the visit that day. And so making adjustments um, in those events um, was just part of, part of how, how we had to adapt uh, with our, our level of care and our interaction with, with patients. Janet, can you share um, how are you having to do your work differently in today's environment? Well, the pattern of grief has not changed since COVID-19, but there's much more grief. COVID has actually intensified that grief. When someone is not able to hold a loved one's hand, or to say goodbye, <laughs> it's devastating. And in addition with the social distancing, it's caused many people to have to postpone memorial services or cancel a funeral altogether. And as a bereavement department, we hear these stories. We hear these stories day in and day out. And I cannot begin to tell you what great sorrow people are feeling at this time because they don't have that, that closure. In addition, during this time, our bereavement department has also had to make changes in how we deliver our services. And that's been hard for, for, the, for folks we see too. So all of our support groups are being done virtually at this time. We also see um, people individually for one-on-one -on -one grief counseling via Zoom. And within the last couple weeks, we have been told that we can start seeing people um, at our office, of course, with safety measures in place, wearing our mask and being six feet apart. So we're excited about doing that. You know, I really try to find a silver lining in some of this um, because it is so hard. There's a silver lining. We, the Faith Hospice Bereavement Department, we can provide grief support services to any family member in the United States now. So if someone wants to be part of a, a virtual support group and they live in California, we can make that happen. If someone wants to see us individually and they live in Florida, we can make that happen. So out of all this, I think that we will continue to provide those services so that we can provide uh, those, brief, or those bereavement services to people who live out of state. I think it's great that um, technology has been so helpful during this time. Um, and I'm reminded of another story. Uh, I have a patient, well, I had a patient uh, at a nursing home and she had Alzheimer's and wasn't able to communicate with her family. Um, and then COVID happened and they weren't able to come in and see her anymore. And she signed on to service and then she was diagnosed with COVID and it became clear that she was declining. And her family just really wanted to see her again. And um, I was able to download the platform that the family had been using to communicate with each other. And we were able to get the whole family, all the kids, uh, her husband, 
none of them had seen her in, I, I, think, I think, at least three or four months. And they were able to talk to her. They were able to sing with her and pray with her. And everybody was crying, uh, even myself. It was just such a beautiful moment. And uh, just to be able to be a part of that and facilitate that for that family um, was very powerful. And they were, they were even able to get her to smile. Um, I think it was the first time she had smiled in maybe a year. I don't know how long it had been. Um, but just the, the gift of technology is just so amazing. So one of the privileges that I have is to receive um, letters of gratitude from families um, where we've served their loved one. And this family did write a letter, the husband, um, which I'll read just a, a few bits from today, but it kind of gives you that backstory. Dear saints, you don't know me, and I do not know you, but thank you for the work you do for the needy and the helpless. My wife was in my life for 65 years and was a special gift from God. We were introduced at a church gathering when I was 18. I looked at her and said, that's my wife. But I didn't know that she was only 15. God answered my prayers, but I had to wait three years to date her. Um, our first date was at her high school graduation, and the rest is history. Isn't that sweet? Um, my wife was in assisted living for four years. She had a broken, um, broken leg, and it didn't heal right. Thanks to Victoria, one of your workers, who took care of my wife even when she got COVID. I could not see her or talk with her for over four months. I sent cards and letters and flowers, and she passed away after five days in the hospital. So, Janet, you hear these stories. Yes, I do. And this is one, um, just one of many. This is one family of many stories. Again, no one can imagine the magnification of emotions uh, people are feeling during this uh, pandemic. And many folks will not even begin to allow themselves to process their grief until co the COVID-19 crisis actually begins to diminish. You know, under typical circumstances, the bereaved often feel alone. And one of the questions that I'm asked quite often, um, kind of breaks my heart, mm -hmm. is where do I belong now? Well, it's such a double whammy because it, it, what's my new normal without my loved one? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That has always been there. And now what is my new normal with COVID? Absolutely. So, you know, in that question they ask, you know, they'll say, I don't want to bother my children because they have their own lives. I don't want to be a third wheel with my couple friends. I don't want to go out with my girlfriends or my guy friends because they tell me I should be over this and I need to move on. Personally, I hear that and it just, um, even as I'm talking, it really breaks my heart because um, it's so hard to have someone say that to you when you're, when you're grieving. Having a grief support center would really offer hope to those feeling isolated by normalizing the grieving process and providing safe space to openly talk about loss mm -hmm. and not being judged for it. The concept of the Faith Hospice Grief Center project is very exciting and it's an opportunity that would allow us to expand grief support services for our Faith Hospice families, our staff, and our community. We really need to bring the basics of grief care together, providing that compassion, understanding, acceptance, offering the professional support to those experiencing grief and loss, the need to help individuals navigate this journey we call grief is so often fraught with fear pain and isolation, leaving one to feel hopeless with a sense of not belonging. A grief center would allow those experiencing loss a place to heal and belong. Mm -hmm. 
while having their emotional needs addressed. Yep. Victoria, what's it like to be a hospice nurse? Well, it can be tough at times. Um, it's very spiritually rewarding to be able to assist patients and families through the end of life. Um, dealing with COVID, though, isn't really something that any of us knew we were going to have to face during our careers. But responding to that and being there for people regardless is part of that call, is part of why we're here. Um, I've witnessed a few COVID deaths now, and I'm remembering one that was especially difficult. Um, I had a patient who was like everybody's grandma. She was so happy. She was such a joy. And she, she loved talking to people. And she, she would always want me to take out my phone and show me the pictures that were on there, uh, my personal phone. Mm -hmm. And she wanted to know who was in the picture, what we were doing, what was going on, if we were having a good time or not. And she just she lived her life through other people in that way. And it was, it was, it was a gift to me to be able to spend that time with her. Uh, she ended up coming down with COVID and watching her transition was, was very difficult. Um, it, it, was, um, it was hard to see her pass away. It was hard to see the effects of COVID on someone as, as, as it was with her. Um, I remember feeling almost helpless because it seemed like it, it didn't matter what we tried, uh, we couldn't get her comfortable. And it wasn't until the very end that, that she was calm, she was comfortable. Um, but those, those experiences, they, they stay with you. <sighs> I'm sorry, <laughs> they stay with you and it's hard to deal with and it's hard to, um, it's hard to let go sometimes. And that's why I'm so glad that Janet's here, uh, that Janet doesn't only, help the community or help the, the family. She also helps us. And I know that I, I, I don't think I could be doing this job, at least not as effectively without Janet. I think that's a really good point, Victoria, that Janet, uh, the bereavement team really is not only taking care of hospice families, but also hospice employees. Yeah. Well, part of the role of the Faith Hospice Bereavement Department is to encourage self-care for our staff. You know, for all the love and care that they pour out into our patients and families day in and day out, it's really of the utmost importance that we provide a safety net, kind of a safe zone for them. One of the things that we, that we do is we call it staff support. And basically what that is is a, is a support group for our staff. And it's an opportunity for them to come together and share their thoughts, um, maybe their struggles, kind of debrief. And uh, we want them to be able to re-energize and refuel because it's so important to keep our staff emotionally healthy with the work that they do. The stress levels must yes. be really high. Yes, absolutely. The stress that folks are experiencing, it's, <laughs> It's been off the charts, one to 10, it's, it's beyond 10. Um, and you know under normal everyday circumstances, we all experience stress, but we have not been living under normal circumstances. And COVID-19 has really increased the stress levels along with the isolation that our bereaved folks are feeling. There's two significant things that have really happened. And really, if, if you take something from this today, support group members who are watching, I will quiz you next week. Anyway, if you take two things from this, one is we have the loss of normalcy. And two, we have the loss of our connections with each other. Loss of normalcy, loss of connections with each other. These two things alone are hitting us extremely hard. 
Some of us aren't even aware of it. It's very hard to predict what the future ramifications of this will be. I truly believe that there will be ramifications from it. And I truly believe in the development of a grief center. It's such an important approach to mental wellness. And I'm going to just preface here for a moment. I'm not talking about a mental health clinic, okay? I'm talking about mental wellness, our mental wellness as human beings. The mental wellness of our staff, of our faith hospice families, and our community as a whole. Grief is certainly not a topic people are excited to talk about. And most people like to believe they will escape life without having to deal with death or loss. The thing is, when it happens, people need to know that there's a safety support in place, like the proposed Faith Hospice Grief Support Center. For those who have lost a one loved one through death, the center would provide that space of belonging in addition to emotional support and validation while helping our bereaved navigate their journey of grief. We want to provide our families, community, with grief support services that include education, resources, healing, and more importantly, hope to be able to walk back into life again. Not everyone can be a hospice caregiver. It is emotional, it is gut-wrenching, it is personal. Um, but if you talk to our faith hospice staff, they do it because they believe in the work that they do and they feel called to that work. So you've heard our story and you know that at faith hospice, we are honored to serve patients and their families with dignified, compassionate hospice care, um, regardless of religion, creed, race, financial uh, status or ability to pay. And though this event looks way different than it has in the past, uh, we hope that Faith Hospice's work um, has shown through in the program that you just watched. Janet, why, why is this so important? Though the COVID pandemic has greatly impacted our fundraising efforts, the need has not diminished. Every gift is important and will, will help hundreds of people to make it through one of the most difficult times of their life. Gifts can be received on our website, shown on the screen, or mailing your gift to the address on our screen. Please join us in supporting Faith Hospice by making your donation at whatever level you can today. Faith Hospice relies on this event to raise funds that make a difference in many lives. Thank you to Janet and to Victoria for sharing your stories and your passion today. And um, thank you, and we are so grateful to Ben Wickstrom and Earhart Construction for making this event possible today and also to all of our sponsors. You've made such a tremendous difference. And thank you for taking the time uh, to watch this event. And we sincerely hope that next year we'll be able to be together in person. Um, in the meantime, we hope that you stay friends with us on Facebook or follow us on our website. There's lots of resources on our website and we change things up often to make sure there are things available to help uh, those who are navigating an end of life journey or a grieving journey. And really our message is that Faith Hospice is here to help. So thank you for your attention and for your consideration. Um, stay safe and God bless. It's 4 a.m. phone calls. It's nights, days, holidays. It's being there in hospitals or at home. 
It's help. Whenever. Wherever. It's being your champion. 